Margaret Emma Cameron Cuny was born on January 16, 1926, in Burton Township, Yellow Medicine County, to Henry and Sadie Colsey Hammerling. She was a member of the first class to graduate from eighth grade at St. Edward Catholic School and later graduated from Indiana High School. Margaret was married to Raymond Kimby. The couple farmed and raised their family west of Indiana. Ray died at a young age, and Margaret became a single mother at a young age. She always maintained a very positive attitude and will, re will be remembered as a very accepting, loving, and caring mother and grandmother. After her children were out of the house, she worked at the Minuana Manor. Margaret was an active member of St. Edward Catholic Church and was very passionate about her family. She enjoyed quilting, baking, puzzles, word searches, and other activities. She also enjoyed time at the Senior Center in her Monday morning coffee group with Tom. Margaret died on Saturday, Saturday January 23, 2021 at the Avera Morningside Heights Care Center in Marshall. She is survived by eight children, 25 grandchildren, 32 and a half great-grandchildren, and two great-great-grandchildren. Grandma Margaret, how do we put so many thoughts and memories into a few short words? She was and always will be someone we look up to and an inspiration. She was a very hard worker. She raised eight kids and helped raise several grandkids. She especially loved the babies. She took us on adventures to Darren's Park, Garvin Park, and several other, other places. When you think of Grandma, you probably think of her cookie jar, playing cards, playing lethal spoons, Belgian cookies, quilt raffles, hay rides, and hollering out, Grandma, and her saying, that's me. Or if you're Jordan, you might think of Grandma's cat. <laughs> her kids talk about getting off the bus and racing to the house for the fresh bread with butter. Also, she hid her candy in the flower bin. She knew when people were in there because of the track of flour. The picture on the front of the program shows Grandma sitting on a rock. This rock is known as the crying rock. She has shown many of us this rock on walks and explained that we could come to this rock and cry when we need to. This was her spot to get away. Grandma was always there for everyone. She always had a good answer and was never judgmental of anyone. We will miss your honest advice, caring thoughts, and your homemade cookies. We wish we had some fireworks to send you off to heaven, but we don't, and maybe sometime we will. We will always think of you when we see them. We will always love you, Grandma. As Tony Kimby says, Grandma liked guns, blue moon, and looking for trouble. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the union of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In the waters of baptism, Margaret died for Christ and rose with him to the night. May she now share with him eternal glory. God of our ancestors and faith, 
Why the covenant made on Mount Sinai and taught the people to strengthen the bonds of the to faith, honor, and law. Look kindly upon Margaret, a mother who sought to bind her children to you, bring her one day to our heavenly home, where the saints dwell in blessedness and peace. We ask this to Christ our Lord.
the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains just a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life will lose it, and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. The Father will honor whoever serves me. The Gospel of the Lord. First, that is my fault because I didn't list, list uh, the first reading, second reading, those things. So I'll take the take the blame for that. But more importantly, my deepest sympathy to you as family, to you as extended family and friends who are gathered here for this funeral for Margaret. I didn't have the opportunity to meet her because of COVID. She uh, was restricted to her home, and uh, honestly, I didn't know she was there. Maybe it would arrange things, and the more I am told stories about her, the more it is my loss for not having gotten to know her. Um, I've told past a few people, it sounds like she was a spitfire. Oh, yeah. That's always a good sign. Not a spitfire as one who necessarily uh, caused trouble, but one who nonetheless kind of found themselves uh, where trouble was. And sounds like she was able to bring sense to it. These readings, as a family picked them out, I, I can see a theme here. And these readings seems, seem to be so fitting for Margaret. And uh, even the readings of this, uh, today's Mass, the morning Mass that we already offered, uh, hint at that same kind of theme, in, in fact, in the Gospel for today. We hear Jesus saying, though it's the smallest, the mustard seed, when his planet becomes the largest, and the birds of the uh, sky come and make his dwelling in it. The idea of a seed being planted. When Margaret was conceived, when she was born, when she was baptized, God knew what was going to happen with her life. But her parents didn't, she didn't. When she met her husband, didn't hear the story of how that happened, but when she met her husband, I can imagine she did not have any idea of what was going to happen. She did not know that it would result in a family as large, as wonderful as she had. I'm sure she was not aware that Raymond would be taken from her so early in life, and that she would live some 43 years without him. She wasn't aware, perhaps, of 2020 being the year that it was. And yet, that seed was planted. And that's the mystery of the kingdom of God when it comes down to it. And today, Jesus uses that image of the seed, a uh, grain of wheat being planted, as an example for his life and the life of all believers. That, that seed has to die to itself. In a very real way, it does. The seed decays and produces food for that little plant inside. That plant is able to take that nourishment around and from that seed in order to produce roots until they can find roots into the soil and grab the food, the nutrients that it needs. But we know something mysterious also about the seed, that while it needs the seed and that little plant within, it needs water. It definitely needs water. And isn't that what we hear about in today's second reading? Are you unaware that we who are baptized in Jesus Christ were baptized into his death? In fact, today we are surrounded by symbols of baptism. We might easily miss them. But as we saw the casket, Margaret's casket sprinkled with holy water, that's a reminder of baptism. The placement of the pall, 
a reminder of the white garment that she received when she was baptized. Even the Paschal candle. It's a reminder, of course, of Easter. But all who are baptized receive a light from that candle. Not literally this candle, but the Paschal candle of that year. It's baptism. That's how this seed is watered. And in our baptism, we die to ourselves. We're buried with him through death. In, in death, through baptism. So that we can rise with him. And even in our first reading, our first reading this morning at Mass, was Hebrews telling us that there's great suffering. And sometimes that suffering is necessary. And to be here, we have that same kind of being. Chastising them, they should be greatly blessed. Because God tried them and found them worthy of Himself. His gold in the furnace, He proved them. Sometimes we think that proof being a philosophical proof or, or a mathematical proof, something that shows the reality, that isn't at all. This is when you're making metal pure. You prove it. You put it in a crucible. You warm it, heat it. Everything that is, has a lower boiling point boils off. Everything with a larger boiling point either rises to the top or sinks to the bottom where it's skimmed off. The gold then poured into whatever mold you wanted. And the, the trash in the bottom thrown out. That's proof. It makes the gold pure. The sadnesses of our life, and the sadness certainly of Margaret's life, makes us pure. It purifies us. Because God is with us in that trial. God is with us in that suffering. That's how we die to ourselves. That's how we come to understand the life of Christ. Christ died for us. If we understand that, then it's certainly easy to die to salvation. If Christ died for us, He who is God, we can die to ourselves. And that ultimately seems to be the theme of Margaret's life. Yes, she liked to have fun, and I heard about the blue moon, and stolen flowers, and all those things, why was I supposed to share that with them? But in the end, the acceptance of suffering, the acceptance of joy, all as a gift. Just that uh, I've heard time and again she was non judgmental. I think that might have come from this understanding that it's all gift. That is all gift. That the Lord in His kindness and His love and His mercy gives us exactly what we need to nourish the plant that was planted in that seed. And every plant is different. It has its beauty. And it has its ugliness. It has the green leaves and the not so green leaves. And yet, in its own way, unique, wonderful. The plant of Margaret's life is here. I can't help but remark. I've been at some funerals that were smaller than just you as a media family. How wonderful that is to see a good and productive life. As good as her life was, you as family continue, not that same life, of course, but bearing her memory, hopefully learning from her example, enjoying her sense of humor, her zest for life, enjoying her mom and, and taking part in her mom church, nature, which at the same time also challenged. And I heard about that as well, because she didn't let you get away with anything. But in a good way, challenge you in a non-judgmental -judge manner. That's beauty. 
That's a gift. I don't know if you know that. I've experienced people like that in my life where they can challenge me and help. Let, let me think I disappointed them. There's a beauty there. Thank God for that gift. So as we gather this day, it is with sadness, of course, in this bittersweet, we know that we are all destined for death. That, that none of us are going to live forever. 95 years, it's a beautiful long life. But we pray for her too. Pray for the repose of her soul, that the Lord will give her rest and peace in his kingdom. And we pray for ourselves. The church teaches that every mass, every funeral especially, is an opportunity for us to reflect on our lives, to thank God for the gift of those who have gone before us, to thank God for our own life and ask Him for that grace to be faithful this day. As non judgmental as Margaret was, our Lord is even less judgmental. He invites us, challenges us, and moves in holy ways to pray and to ask him that we ourselves would allow that water baptism to nourish us, that we would grow into the plants that God has created us to be, that we would die to ourselves because Christ died for us. confidence we present to God our petitions for Margaret, the church, and the entire world. In baptism, Margaret, receive the light of Christ. Scatter the darkness now and lead her over the waters of death. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Our sister Margaret was nourished at the table of the Savior. Welcome her into the halls of the heavenly banquet. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many friends and members of our families have gone before us and await the kingdom. Grant them an everlasting home with your son. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many people die by violence, war, and famine each day. Show your mercy to those who suffer so unjustly these sins against your love, and gather them to the eternal kingdom of peace. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Those who trusted in the Lord now sleep in the Lord. Give refreshment, rest, and peace to all whose faith is known to you alone, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The family and friends of Margaret seek comfort and consolation. Heal their pain, dispel the darkness and doubt that come from grief, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Many struggle with faith or are no longer practicing. May they come to experience the love of God and return to the practice of the faith, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord calls many to follow as priests and religious. May their labors lead many to heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We are assembled here in faith and confidence to pray for our sister Margaret. Strengthen our hope so that we may live in the expectation of your son's coming. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. God, having fallen, we ask you to hear and answer all these prayers we present. In Jesus Christ, who is our Lord, forever and ever.
Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, who my Father. And the Lord, so sacrifice your hands. For the praise of the Lord, for our good and church. As we humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O Lord, for the salvation of your servant Margaret, we beseech your mercy that she, who did not doubt your son to be a loving Savior, we find in him a merciful judge, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks. The Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For it is at your summons that we come to birth, and your, by your will that we are governed. And at your demand that we return on account of sin to that earth from which we came. And when you give the sign, we who have been redeemed by the death of your Son shall be raised up to the glory of his resurrection. And so with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. In a similar way, when the supper was ended, he took the chalice. And, give you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and fermented for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to a second coming. We offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrifice victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with this Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit of Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession you present, we rely for our family God. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation we pray the Lord advance the peace and salvation of all the world. We please to confirm in faith and charity of the Pilgrim Church on earth with your servant Francis our Pope, 
the order of bishops, all the clergy, and turn to you, gain for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your mercy, in your compassion and mercy to Father, gather to yourself all your children, scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant Margaret, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our holy body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To our departed brothers and sisters too, and all who please you at their passage of this life, give kind of witness to your kingdom. There we hope to join forever in the fullness of your glory, when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes. For seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages, and praise you without end to Christ our Lord, to whom we restore the world of all that is good. Through and with him and in him, O God, my Father, in unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever.
For our first reading in Psalm this morning, let us sing two verses of number 325.
who saw left us in the sacrament of his body, true for the children, mercifully, mercifully grant us, strengthened by it, our sister Margaret may come to thee, take the eternal people of Christ, who live and reign forever and ever. This time we will have a final accommodation here, and then we will process home to the cemetery. We invite you all to join in that procession home to the cemetery. I understand that the family is, has arranged for reception, and for those that are invited, uh, to make their way to the, uh, the cemetery, or if you wish not to be at the cemetery, you can go to the place of reception uh, right away and wait. Um, we pray that the weather will be cooperative for us on the very site. Special word of thank you to our musician Lois today. Um, music during COVID has been tricky, but um, we are doing our best. And, Thank you for helping us to uh, join our voices together. Mm -hmm. Trust in God, we pray together for Margaret and all who come to the last prayer of all. There is sadness and heartache, but we take comfort in the hope that one day we shall see Margaret again and enjoy her friendship. Although this congregation will disperse in sorrow, the mercy of God will gather us together again and enjoy the kingdom. Let us therefore console one another in the faith of Jesus Christ. Into your hands, Father, and mercies, we commend our sister Margaret and assure her to hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you have bestowed upon Margaret in this life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints of Christ. Merciful Lord, turn toward us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain to comfort one another with assurance and sympathy. Until we all meet in Christ are with you and with our sister forever. We ask this to Christ our Lord. Amen. And peace, let us take our sister to her place of rest. We join in our closing song, How Great Thou Art, 422. 